Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. It's been a while since I've uploaded anything. I've just been crazy busy with the business. And today's video, I figured I had to upload. I had to make a video for this because I'm finally changing out the pad on my JFJ Easy Pro Plus. And a lot of you who've watched the first video I did on how I use this machine, since the instructions are terrible, um, know that I don't use the JFJ pads. I got this one here just for a, uh, just for a size reference but I don't use these pads anymore. You can see it's pretty much brand new. Um, I actually use these Bayer heavy duty polishing pads, which is what you would use if you were like polishing out a car, if you were correcting clear coat or, and things like that. Uh, this one, you can see on the back, we're using the ultra fine foam. So it's the last stage. It's that very finished, like the very final stage where you're just kind of bringing out, as they say, the show car finish. So it's a super, super, super light cut. Um, they do have, obviously, other ones. If you want the yellow, it's like a fine foam, which has a little more cut than this one. The medium foam, which is a more aggressive cut. And of course, you have your coarse foam, which is blue. And that's gonna be like your hardest cut. I've never had to go to blue. Um, for very bad discs, I have used the green, but that's like very, very one off. Usually anything that is kind of work pretty good, yellow will bring back. And this white pad right here probably brings back around 95% of the discs to like perfect condition. So now one thing to note is this is a six inch pad. This is the smallest I can find this pad in. I get these from Home Depot, not Home Depot. I get these from Harbor Freight. Uh, I'll put the link in the description below if you guys you know want to check them out. But these pads are like, they're like four and a half inches or so. So basically you have to take these right here with some scissors and you just, you cut it down to about four and a half inches so that it'll fit your little, uh, your pad in here on the Easy Pro. And we just use this marker to just trace the outline. But I'll show you how I do that. Um, but yeah, so let's get this pad out. And you can see this one's been in there quite a while because you, you always get that you know, that circle ring in the middle of where it just shows the, the pad is worn down. Another thing is these pads are actually thicker than the JFJ site gives you. So, uh, yeah, I've been using this probably for mm, two, two to three months, maybe. And you can see that it is basically the same size as a brand new buffing pad. <laughs> so this actually, I can still use it. I've used it. I actually used it earlier today. Um, but when they start to get down this low, normally I do end up swapping them out for a brand new pad. But in like worst case scenario, if I needed like an emergency pad or something, I could always grab one of these. They would work just fine. So, but we'll throw that one in the trash because I have plenty of these. But we're going to show you how I cut this one down, what I do to size it up. It doesn't have to be perfect. You want to make a good cut, but it doesn't have to be a great cut, to be honest. Like if you're off a little bit that machine is going to run just fine. You won't have any issues, but yeah, let's jump into kind of cutting this one down and putting it on here and we'll grab us a disc and see how it works. What we're going to do is now these pads already have like the Velcro built in the back. So you don't have to worry about that. They'll stick right to the, uh, to the little plate on the JFJ easy pro. But the first thing you want to do is you just take this, and stick it on top of here. Now you may notice that the hole in this one is a lot smaller than the hole in this one. That does not matter. As long as you line this up center with the plate on the JFJ Easy Pro, it doesn't matter that there's some space in there, it's gonna work perfectly fine. So you don't have to worry about that, but all you wanna do is you wanna line this up pretty much as good as you can. Uh, you can just kinda of gauge it around the corners, make sure that they're all you know, pretty even. And then you take your marker, just put a little pressure here to hold it. And what I do is I literally just go around it like this. Make sure you're always doing this on the back because obviously you don't want the marker on the front of the pad where it's gonna actually be touching the discs. But yeah, so you just make your cutting guide right there. And then you can never use this thing again. Uh, but yeah, so then we bring in our scissors. Where did I put those scissors? Ah, I stuck them on my lap. I don't know how I didn't feel that. But yeah, so I usually just kind of come in from the side right here. And like I say, kind of just follow that line all the way around. 
again like i said you want to make a good cut but it doesn't have to be a great cut so if you feel like it's not a perfect circle or something like that you'll be fine it doesn't really matter if you notice the one i pulled off wasn't the best circle but hey it gets the job done now the reason why i like these pads better than the jfj easy pro pads that you can get from them is that this pad is good enough to where i don't have to like use two separate pads like this pad will bring a lot of discs around by itself so it's just like kind of a one stage correction there we go like i said you can see that part's kind of out but again it, it's not going to matter so you don't have to cut it down to perfection uh this thing you can just throw away because you won't need it but yeah, like I was saying, this pad does just an amazing job of taking the place of the polishing and the buffing pad that JFJ Easy Pro provides. It kind of puts a two in one. And in all honesty, I find that it also gives you a better finish on the discs. And since it's it just a, has a little more give to it. And these are built for like the automotive industry. Like this is really for dealing with cars. So it has a lot better heat dissipation as well than the JFJ Easy Pro uh, pads do. And anyone who out there who use these machines know that heat is your enemy because heat can damage a disc where a disc won't play at all, even though it may look amazing, but the heat can destroy it and it'll never play. So these do a great job of getting rid of heat while it's being ran. And yeah, just they just do an amazing job. They're thicker, so they last longer. And they're heavy duty, so they're built for a, you know, they're built to, to last longer than those little pads are. And they're about the same price. I think one of these is around about eight bucks. I want to say a polishing pad for a JFJ is around $10 or so. And since this kind of takes the place of the buffing and the polishing pad from them, you really end up saving money and it lasts longer as well. So, all right, well, let's get this put on the machine and we'll run a couple discs to it and see how it works. All right, so back over to the JFJ Easy Pro machine. Just take our pad that we just made and we just kind of center it. Just kind of, let's see, try to make it the best we can. Like I said, it doesn't have to be perfect. It's kind of hard doing this when you are uh, trying to dodge a camera at the same time. But yeah, just kind of center it, get it stuck in there, and she sits good. Now, the only things I really use, like I said, I don't use any of the JFJ products except for this, and I just use this to spread around the actual products that I use, which I think everyone kind of finds a little funny. <laughs> but So the first thing you want to do when you put in a new pad, or if you haven't used that pad that day, or maybe in like four or five hours or so, these pads will dry out. So the first thing I do is I dampen them with just some regular tap water spray that I have. So it's just like one, two, three, four that just helps them retain the product and kind of soak it in so it's just not completely dry uh, one of my favorite products to use for these is the meguiar's plastics so we'll put this down first one you can be a little heavy-handed if you want uh, this bottle is actually starting to run out so i have to bring another bottle in here soon but i usually do that kind of give it a little circle and then i just just lightly spread it and I always spread to like that spot right there so then I just wipe off the thing there I'll kind of keep it a little heavy like in this area because that's where the disc is going to first touch it kind of just gives more product there for the disc to spin around on that pad if that makes sense works well for me so that's just how I do it uh, so our first disc we're going to use is going to be a disc that is not too too heavily damaged it's going to be uh, assassin's creed black flag and this is disc two <laughs> so, but this is kind of what it looks like hope you guys can make it out it's not horrible it's probably a little more fingerprinty and just like some minor scratches here and there this is a disc that probably will play if you just like wiped it off on your shirt but let's put this back Let's see if I can move this camera up some so you guys can see up here at the top. Uh, let's see. Okay, that should be good. So, 
as always, just put our disc down there. And one of the things I always tell people to do is kind of make you like a little one of these. I just basically cut a little microfiber towel and it makes just like a little ring, almost like a, uh, I don't know, almost like a little gasket or something. But it just stops this thing from like sealing and damaging the inside of the disc. Now it won't damage it to where like it doesn't play or anything. I would say it's more for aesthetics, but it also just allows you to like easily untighten that so it doesn't bond to the disc as bad <laughs> uh, and just like I said it just protects that center part of the disc so we have that there uh, thing we'll do we'll close this down and we'll just let it run for a disc like that I could probably do like 20 seconds and it'll be fine uh, so maybe we'll do a quick 20 second run and see see how it works now when you first put these this new pad in, especially if you're going to use these bare pads, they're a little thicker, so you might feel like you have to push down a little bit more. That's completely normal. But see, there we go. And we'll flip it on. Let's see, let's move this thing down so you guys can see a little better. Flip it on, and 20 seconds. All right, seems our 20 seconds is up. Let's turn it off, safety first. Open this up. And let's see if we can, oh, well, just broke that. Did I break this again? Yes, I did. Oh, great. All right, let's see if we can make this work. <laughs> Another one of these bites the dust. I gotta remember to loosen these before I try to undo them. I guess that'll be the blooper for this video. But yeah, so we'll just take that off. You see, it just breaks so much easier with that. And you don't get that damage in the center of the ring. You can still see like a very light trace of the product, but it doesn't cut into it. So you see just coming off there for 20 seconds, like looks <laughs> basically brand new at this point. So what I like to do at this point is I take some of this, which is like a laser media, basically a cleaning fluid. So I just kind of spray that on it. I don't want to spray it in the machine, but a couple sprays. I take a microfiber cloth that I use only for this part, which is basically just down, down, down. You don't want to wipe in a circular motion. You want to come straight down. And that just gets the remaining product off of it. You flip it over and I like to go around the corners sometimes product will sneak on the front like around the corners so then after we do that I take this blue microfiber towel and this is just like my finishing one where I just kind of bring down like so and let's see if we can get this on there you can see that, I mean, it came out looking really good, especially for 20 seconds. Like, normally I run it through for a minute. Uh, looks like there's a little bit at the top. That's, it doesn't even look like scratches. It just looks like something that can just be kind of wiped off. Yeah. So, you can see, like I said, the disc, they perform, I mean, the, the pads perform, like, really good. Uh, all right, so now we're going to do a little more damage disc. And, oh, just in case you were wondering, it's just the same game. Still disc two, uh, <laughs> but yeah, so that turned out pretty good. So our next next disc we're going to use is going to be Crisis Two. Can it run Crisis? Let's see. But um, as you can see, this disc is definitely a lot more worked over than that last disc. So we're going to see how good that this finishing pad can do with a disc of this quality. Now, sometimes this will be a disc that I might have to bump up to the yellow pad, which is the fine polishing pad for Bayer, and then down to the white pad. I uh, don't think this would be a green pad. I don't think this would be a medium need, but it could be. But let's just see what this pad can do by itself. So what we're going to do is, so same game, Crisis 2. Put that on up there. 
We'll grab our we'll call a little microfiber gasket. Let's see. Screw that down. Boom. Let's get our plastics. Hopefully I have enough in here for this one. We don't have to do the water because we just did the water. So should be fine. I'm always a little heavy handed on the product. So if you're wondering why I'm using so much, it's just kind of, that's kind of how I do it. But like I said, I like to leave the product a little heavy where the disc first touches. And when you're using a brand new pad, it's kind of good to be a little heavy handed on the polish for the first few goes because it really like kind of conditions that pad. Okay, so we'll close this one down. And let's see, if we can bring our broken light down now. <laughs> we'll turn it on and we'll let it go. This probably should be a minute. If you're wondering why it's shaking, it's because I literally have to hold this thing together right now for this angle. <laughs> I just don't want anyone thinking that it's any disc switching or anything like that. We're going to see how it does. Like I said, I don't expect this one to be perfect, but I just want to show you how good just this white pad by itself can actually be. Hopefully this isn't much longer. Oh, wow. wow. That was weirdly specific, but okay. Let's see if I can get it to, oh, dang it. Oh, it just broke completely off. Wow. All right. So we're going to have to do. <laughs> this could be like a selfie stick situation. We'll turn that off. Try to do this with one hand now. Let's see. Oh god, this is gonna suck. Let's try to break it loose with one hand. Let's see. Boom. Yay. Oh, it's quite a bit of product got tossed on that thing this time, so definitely went probably a little too heavy. We'll take off our little gasket. Oh, this is going to be the part that's really going to suck. I don't know. All right. So what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to spray it on here. Let's see. Um, normally, I don't do that. But trying to do this with one hand, I'm going to have to do some uh, different tactics, basically. But like I said, this stage is really just to get any uh, residual product off of the disc okay that's pretty good now we will try to do this with this buff oh with this buffing thing gosh this video is definitely my welcome back to youtube video because everything is going wrong so We're not going to focus on the front of the disc, like if any product got over to the front. Because like I said, I'm really struggling with this one hand action. See, it's still crisis too. But you can see after that one minute go, there's definitely still some like some light damage on the disc. But it definitely brought it around like way better than what it was. So this is like one of those situations where I could just run it back through probably for another minute. And... This thing would definitely like come out even better. But that's what I mean by being able to utilize that one pad to get like a lot of stuff done. Now the yellow pad would have probably took a lot of that out on just one pass. But again, this was just like a test case scenario for a really bad game or a really bad condition game. Still crisis two. Just kind of show you like how good that pad can actually do and how bad of a disc it can manage with. So, but uh, let's see. We can stick that one back on there. I don't even know how I'm going to do this because this is completely broken now. Let's see. Will any of this work for me? Uh, no, it's not going to work at all. Okay. Well. So I don't think that's going to work. But let's see. I will put this back on. Let me try to tighten this back down. 
This is very difficult with one hand. All right, that's good. Drop down some more of our product. Uh, if you see like the discoloration in the pad, that's not a big deal. It's going to turn to more of a black color. If you have like a um, like an air gun or something, you can kind of blow it out if you want to, but I've never had any issues from leaving it like that. But we put it back down. Turn that on, then one minute. I always like to stick with one minute. You can do two if you want. I just feel like it starts to get hot in two minutes and I want to err on the side of safety when it comes to doing this or safety for the disc, not really safety for me or anything, but it just stops too much heat from being built up and stops the, uh, the product from wearing out. So that's why I usually stick to one minute intervals. I don't really see the need to ever let it go for two minutes. I would rather do two sessions of one minute rather than risk it doing a session of two minutes and it gets a little too hot and ends up damaging the disc. If you're wondering, I'm literally holding a ring light in my hand. But okay, so it's done. Turn that off. Pop that side, pop that side. Pick it up. And again, let's see if we can. There we go. So that gasket makes it so easy to break the seal on that. If anyone has used this without one of these little gasket things, they can probably tell you that, yeah, that would have never happened just now. Because <laughs> that thing really sits on there. Boom. Do our same little strategy we were doing. Try to always do some straight down, straight lines from the center. We'll grab our blue microfiber cloth here. Okay. Let's see what we're looking at. Still, same disc. But. So we still got a little action over there. You can still see those marks. So yeah, this is definitely one that you would have to do with the yellow pad uh, if you wanted to get those marks right there out. They're still hanging around. But from the before and after, I mean, for this to be the very last stage pad, like this is just a finishing pad, it shows you just how well this thing can get out a lot of damage that's on these discs. Because this was a, a pretty work disc. It was worked over really well. And I would say that this disc would easily play. Now, it may not be a disc you want to sell because of the damage over here in the corner. But, uh, like I said, the yellow pad would easily take that out of there. And, but if this was just like a personal disc or something, oh, this disc perfect to go right back into the collection. It will play every time. So, but yeah, uh, that's going to wrap it up for this video. I hope, you know, you guys like the video. Uh, I'm going to keep looking for like better pads like I love these bare pads but I hate that I have to cut them down to size so if I can find a pad that uh comes closer or at least like maybe five inches or maybe four and a half inches where it can just sit directly on here without any modifications and it does a really good job with the discs I'll make another video to show you those pads as well but thank you for the support and I'll catch you guys on the next one peace